Although the internet provides all sorts of benefits, it can also be a very scary place. From websites that curse their users to AI generated supernatural entities. Coming in at a number 10 spot, we have Loab. We knew artificial intelligence was terrifying, but did you think it was gonna have a hint of the paranormal as well? Because according to a recent viral Twitter thread, it may be. Introducing Loab, an AI generated woman who has captured the attention of the internet and left many wondering about the mysteries of AI art. In more recent months, AI generated art has skyrocketed in popularity thanks to tools like Dolly Mini, Mid Journey, and Stable Diffusion. These programs allow users to enter a short phrase which the AI interprets to create an image. However, this has created an ethical and copyright dilemma as the AI generates new images based on a vast amount of real art created by human beings. But the AI is not just reworking old images, but rather creating new ones based on computational and mathematical processes. Now back to Loab. This terrifying looking girl is a combination of human features in the form of an older woman generated by an artificial intelligence art tool. Twitter user Super Composite created Loab using a negative prompt, telling the AI to create something that is the opposite of the prompt. Super Composite then used that as a negative prompt and the AI generated images of a long haired older woman with rosy cheeks, which they named Loab. Super Composite notes that Loab quote, haunts every images she touches and can latch onto the idea of Loab the word itself. At a number nine spot, we have the girl in the photograph. The girl in the photograph is a creepy story that revolves around a mysterious girl who appears in a curse photograph. According to the legend, anyone who views the photograph becomes instantly and obsessively in love with this girl because of her exceptional beauty. The story follows a teenage boy named Tom who finds a photograph outside of his school featuring the girl holding up her fingers in a peace sign. Tom falls in love with the girl and sets out to find her, but no one seems to have ever heard of her. Despite his efforts to find her, Tom becomes increasingly depressed and devastated. And as the days go by, he begins to hear strange noises and see shadows outside of his window. However, after being a awakened by tapping and giggling twice, he decides to take action and follow the sound outside with the photograph in hand. And tragically, Tom runs into the street and is struck by a truck. The legend suggests that the girl in the photograph has the power to manipulate people by using her beauty as a tool to brainwash victims into trying to find her. Additionally, the girl in the photograph changes stances as she racks up her victim count. And in the photos, you can see this with the girl holding up another one of her fingers up instead of just the original peace sign. At a number eight spot, we have Annie Petrova. Annie Petrova was a talented ice skater from a young age, being trained by the famous Sergei Polukev for the Olympics. Before her Crystal Classic Championship, Annie decided to Google her name and was shocked to find a Wikipedia page that predicted that she would win the competition. As a result, she started regularly checking her her Wikipedia page before every single competition and found that it predicted her wins for every single one of them. However, when Annie decided to influence her Wikipedia page by editing the information to say that she won the Olympics, her life took a nasty turn. Her career went downhill and she lost her parents as a result. The Wikipedia page was edited to say horrible things about her as well, including calling her a selfish little bee who deserved what she got. During the Olympic tryouts, Annie was blamed for a blade coming off her rival's skates and hitting her head, leaving her bleeding. Annie was disturbed and complained to Wikipedia as a result, but they could not find her page after an investigation. At a number seven spot, we have the eight feet tall girl. Miss Eight Feet Tall, also known as Hasha Kusama, is a Japanese spirit or yokai that is said to take the form of a towering female specter, standing at least eight feet tall. She's often described as having long black hair and wearing a white dress and a white hat. Her haunting voice is very unique, characterized by the repeated interjection, po, in a deep, masculine, or high feminine tone. She's inhumane in terms of her height and can vary from being an attractive woman to a withered hag. Despite her varying appearance, most eyewitnesses claim that she wears a white summer dress and a wide brimmed hat. She appears to be very similar to other Japanese demons, particularly onyuro or female ghosts, who often sought revenge on the living or grew malicious after their deaths. At our number six spot, we have Mr. Widemouth. Mr. Widemouth is an infamous online character that has been terrifying readers for years with his manipulative ways and his disturbing appearance. The story of Mr. Widemouth follows a young child who is 
bedridden due to an illness and then encounters a creature while stuck at the home. At first, the child is excited to have a new friend, but as time goes on, they begin to realize that Mr. Widemouth is not what he seems. Mr. Widemouth is a small furry creature with a large mouth and eyes that seem to pierce into your soul. Despite his cute appearance, Mr. Widemouth is far from friendly. He has a talent for manipulating children into doing things that are harmful to themselves and many young kids have reportedly lost their lives due to his sinister influence. This makes Mr. Widemouth all the more terrifying. He preys on the most innocent and vulnerable members of society. He hides under the bed and urges the child to jump out of a second story window, claiming that a trampoline is waiting below. When the child refuses, Mr. Widemouth becomes increasingly angry and sulks under the bed for hours. He even tries to teach a child how to juggle with knives and when that fails, he becomes even more upset. What makes Mr. Widemouth truly terrifying is his manipulative nature. He uses his cuteness and charm to lull children into a false sense of security, only to turn on them when they least expect it. In the hump of our list, we have the Blind Maiden. Would you be brave enough to visit the Blind Maiden website at midnight? Cause those who visit this site at this hour may catch a glimpse of someone approaching their home on their monitor. This Spanish urban legend tells a chilling tale of a demon that haunts the internet, offering users the chance to experience a real horror themselves. Upon entering the website, users are met with a rapid montage of gruesome images, then a foreboding message appears on screen, warning users of the imminent danger they are about to face. From here, they must either accept or decline the invitation to engage in the experience of absolute horror. Those who accept will witness witness a sinister silhouette approaching their home on their monitor. They must turn away within 5 seconds or face the gaze of the blind maiden who will rip out their eyes and take a snapshot of their face to add to her macabre gallery on the website. Those who decline however are rewarded with their deepest desire. But at what cost? And although there is no solid evidence to prove that the website ever existed, the amount of accounts from people all over the web make me think that there is no doubt that this website definitely existed before. At number 4 spot we have a Hippo Eats Dwarf. Have you heard of the tale of the Hippo Eats Dwarf? This bizarre urban legend has been circulating since the mid 1990s and has been managed to trick some print newspapers into publishing it as a fact. But what is the story behind this outrageous claim? According to the legend, a freak accident occurred during a circus act involving a dwarf bouncing on a trampoline. At the same time, a hippopotamus began to yawn and the dwarf landed into the hippo's open mouth, resulting in the poor dwarf being swallowed whole. The audience initially applauded, thinking it was all part of the show before the horrifying truth set in. But where did this story even come from? It was first reported in the National Lampoon magazine in 1988, supposedly sourced from the Las Vegas Sun, claiming that the dwarf was consumed in front of an audience of 7,000 people. However, it wasn't until 1994 when the story started circulating on the internet through a Usenet post. And although many claim that this is a hoax, this is definitely worth noting since it's one of the most original internet urban legends on this list. Number 3 Cyber Stalker the cyberstalker legend of Colby is a cautionary tale about the dangers of sharing personal information online. The story revolves around a 10 year old boy named Colby who made a friend on an online children game. Colby's online friend wanted to send him a birthday present and asked for his address. And despite his parents warnings, Colby gave out his address and immediately regretted it. Cause later that night, Colby's guilt compelled him to confess to his parents what he had done. His mother scolded him saying that he should never give his personal information online. She then proceeded to tell Colby a horrifying story about a man who pretended to be a kid and befriend a family online. As Colby tried to escape, the man caught him and ended his life as well. Number 2 The Momo Challenge The Momo Challenge is a prime example of how a seemingly random combination of elements can lead to a massive panic driven by social media. Momo is a creepy looking bird woman who sends a series of increasingly dangerous tasks to complete if you text a number on WhatsApp. The challenge starts off innocently enough, but ultimately encourages self-harm and eventually taking your own life. Failure to complete a task leads to threats of violence and doxing. And for those who don't know doxing, basically your internet just doesn't work anymore. The Momo challenge originated in a Facebook group but gained worldwide notoriety when YouTuber Rainbot made a video about it. Warnings about the challenge spread quickly with the police service of Northern Ireland urging parents to monitor their children's activity on WhatsApp. While the Momo challenge is an urban legend, it does have roots in reality. 
Overall, the challenge preyed on parental fears and social anxiety about what children were doing online while unsupervised, and much of the reason why we got in trouble for using the internet in the first place. At a number one spot, we are the Song and Dance Man. If you ever heard of someone named the Song and Dance Man, you would think that they're a nice person who likes to entertain. However, as the story goes, there was something very sinister about this man that made him more than just an ordinary entertainer. The story is told by a man named George who claims to have encountered the Song and Dance Man and his horrors. According to George, this man was tall and gangly with long six-fingered hands. He would ride into town wearing a red and white pinstrip jacket and a straw hat on his head. The townspeople were immediately fascinated by him and his skills but little did they know what horrors awaited them. The song and dance man would entice members of the town to come into his tent for free to sing and dance. However, as soon as he started playing his fiddle, the people were not allowed to stop dancing. They would dance for hours on end, unable to control their bodies until they started dropping down one by one. Those who fell were then stepped on and crushed by the other individuals who had no control over their own movements. Eventually, the song and dance man stopped playing and let the survivors go. The incident left the town in shock and horror, with many wondering what had happened to them and whether they could ever recover from this trauma. Coming in at a number 10 spot, we have the deceased girlfriend keeps messaging on Facebook. This is a story of a man whose girlfriend passed away in a freak car accident and has been receiving messages from her on Facebook ever since. They had been dating for five years and although Emily was not interested in marriage at first, the man was convinced that he would have married her within the three months of the relationship. But unfortunately, the accident changed all their plans. Emily was a vibrant person, always happy when camping, but was always attached to her phone. And things didn't happen immediately after her accident, but it was 13 months later until the first message from Emily arrived on September 4, 2013. The man had left Emily's Facebook account activated to send her occasional messages, post on her wall, and go through her photos. However, when he got a message from his deceased girlfriend, this is when things started to get a bit creepy. Then around February 2014, Emily started tagging herself in the man's photos. He would get notifications for them, but they would normally be removed by the time he got to the picture. The first time he actually caught one, he described it as if someone had punched him right in the gut. She would tag herself in spaces where it was plausible for her to be or where she would usually hang out. Friends who noticed it thought it was some messed up bug. And then he found out recently that there were other friends who noticed it and didn't say anything about it. Some of these friends even removed him from their Facebook friends list because of this. He sent various messages to what he assumed was Emily's hacker, but everything he got back was either really odd or very random. Number nine, the blind maiden. The blind maiden is a spine chilling internet urban legend that originated all the way in Spain. It centers around a website of the same name that is said to be accessible only under specific conditions, which are when the user is alone, all the lights in their house are turned off, and it's midnight on a moonless night. The website promises to take users to a new level of horror that will engage all five of their senses. Once inside, the user is bombarded with rapid fire images before being presented with a choice to accept or decline an invitation to experience a real horror. Those who clicked accept are shown a chilling silhouette of something, presumably the blind maiden, walking towards their home and eventually into their room they are currently in. If the user decides to turn around and face them, their eyes will be ripped out of their skull. After which, a picture of their face is added to the gallery of eyeless faces on the website as I mentioned earlier. Despite the warnings, there are still brave and curious souls who accept the challenge and face a blind maiden's wrath. However, there still is a glimmer of hope, as some have managed to cheat their way out of her grasp. One such case involves a Spanish boy who claimed to have survived the ordeal by being knocked unconscious after running away from the person and hitting his head on the table's edge. Sounds like a complete accident to me, but if that works, it works. Noted. Number 8, The Gurgles and Bugman Show. Have you ever seen this photo? Well, this is from the disturbing television program called The Gurgles and Bugman Show. It featured two strange characters who would constantly play pranks on people. Gurgles was a strange clown with a skeletal face and all black eyes, and Bugman was a short round man with prosthetics that made him look like a fly, with a mouth that opened from side to side. The show itself was like candid camera, with pranks played on unsuspecting people. The camera angles would change as Gurgles and Bugman shifted their hiding places from the dark corners of a room, to the cupboards, to the ceiling, or even under the furniture, all while looking back at the viewer and winking. 
The closer they got, the louder and more laughter from the soundtrack. But there was a dark twist to the show. When everyone went to sleep, Gurgles and Bugman would select one person to play a prank on. Bugman would crawl out from under the bed and stick a sharp straw into the person's neck. The victim would then be paralyzed and then Gurgle would make faces at the camera. And while the fake audience laughed, Gurgles would whisper, quote, See you again soon. Many who have seen the program claimed it to be one of the most terrifying things they have ever witnessed, with one person even claiming that their TV mysteriously disappeared from the room after watching the show. He didn't really think much of it and thought his parents just sold it. Number 7. The Rake The Rake is a mysterious creature that has been haunting rural New York for years. It is described as a tall, thin humanoid monster with no body hair with long, sharp hands that kind of resemble an overgrown dog. What sets a rake apart from other monsters is its eyes, which are said to be hollow, black, and able to pierce into a person's soul. The legend of the rake began in 2003 when numerous people in upstate New York reported seeing the creature. It was spotted mostly in rural areas and left behind a wake of terror and intrigue to most people who saw it. However, a media blackout followed these reports and all evidence supporting the rake's existence completely vanished off the web. In 2006, a group of internet sleuths gathered all the available details about the rake and then compiled them chronologically. In this, they accumulated nearly two dozen documents that describe the creature's physical appearance and its dangerous eyes. Those who make eye contact with the rake are said to become its instant prey. There are many fictionalized accounts of encounters with the rake, including a journal entry from a woman who lost her husband and daughter to the creature. The rake crawled quickly under the bed until it was less than a foot from her husband's face, where it remained silent for about 30 seconds. This account, along with others, have been enhanced with falsified visual and auditory evidence. So, don't believe everything you see. Number 6. The Lavender Town Syndrome The Lavender Town Syndrome is a terrifying phenomenon that occurred in Japan after the release of Pokemon Red and Green in 1996. Where the theme music had extremely high frequencies that only young people could hear, they began to experience severe headaches, afflictions, with some even taking their own lives. After this incident, programmers fixed the Lavender Town theme music to a lower frequency so that children would no longer be affected by it. However, the eerie rumors surrounding the Lavender Town Syndrome still persisted, causing some to believe that there was more to the story than just a simple change in frequency. Then in 2010, a video appeared that claimed to have analyzed the audio of Lavender Town's music using special software. The video showed images of the Unknown, which is a Pokemon that didn't appear until the second generation of the games. Unknown spelled out the words, leave now, which only added to the creepiness of the Lavender Town syndrome. And there's also a beta version of the Lavender Town that added more to its rumors and legends surrounding this mysterious phenomenon. The beta version of Lavender Town has been the subject of much speculation, with many people claiming that it's even more disturbing than the regular version of the game. And this is what it kind of sounded like. In the hump of our list, we have Dear David. In 2017, Twitter user Adam Ellis captivated the internet with his viral horror phenomenon known as Dear David. Ellis began updating his Twitter account regularly with posts about strange and unexplainable occurrences within his apartment. He spoke of a ghostly child with a misshapen head who haunted him in his dreams every single night. As an illustrator by trade, Ellis would sketch out images of the child and then post them to give a clear idea of what he was seeing. Then as time went by, the ghost was revealed to be known as Dear David. Adam learned that David's misshapen head was the result of an accident involving a fallen shelf. After his interaction with David in his dreams, Adam began seeing him within his apartment while awake. He felt almost as if he was going mad, glimpsing his ghostly child from time to time and often hearing disturbing noises coming from his hallway and attic space. Adam's account of the haunting of David spread like wildfire, and many believed it to be true. While it has since been confirmed as a hoax, sorry to break it to you, the original tweets and accompanying images made for a genuinely creepy read and ultimately a great online urban legend. Number 4. Laughing Jack the fear of clowns is not uncommon. Hell, at one point, I absolutely hated clowns, and Stephen King's movie It traumatized me. But hey, I'm good now. The prevalence of people fearing clowns is one of the reasons why the urban legend of Laughing Jack became so infamous and menacing online. This terrifying character originated from a creepy pasta and gained its own fandoms over time. Laughing Jack started as a jack-in-the-box clown with a personality reflecting that of its owner. 
Unfortunately, one of Jack's owner was a boy named Isaac Grossman, who grew up to be a serial killer. And so Laughing Jack became tainted by his owner's actions. As the story goes, Laughing Jack developed magical abilities over time, including the ability to teleport and use telekinesis on his victims. Number three, the Black Eyed Children. Black Eyed Children are a contemporary legend in American folklore. They are believed to be paranormal creatures with pale skin and black eyes. These creatures are reportedly seen hitchhiking or even begging, or are encountered on the doorsteps of residential homes. While tabloid coverage of these creatures claims that the tales of black eyed children have existed since the 1980s, most sources indicate that the legend originated from 1996 postings written by Texas reporter Brian Bethel on a ghost related mailing list. In his stories, Bethel describes encountering two such children in Abilene, Texas, and he claims that a second person had a similar unrelated encounter in Portland, Oregon. The legend of black Black Eyed Children gained popularity and Bethel's stories became regarded as classic examples of creepypasta. Number 2. Candle Cove Candle Cove was an online horror story that has haunted the internet since 2009. Written by web cartoonist and author Chris Straub, Candle Cove revolves around a mysterious television show that only a select group of individuals can see. The story begins on a web forum called the Net Nostalgia Forums, where users started to discuss an unusual low budget children's television show called Candle Cove. The show features a young girl named Janice who imagines herself to be friends with pirates and her pirate companions who are portrayed by string marionettes. However, as the discussion continues, the users start to recall more and more disturbing details about the show. One character in particular, the Skin Taker, was a skeleton pirate who wears clothing made out of children's skin. And also, there's another episode where all the puppets are just seen flailing and screaming while Janice cries. Kind of like some satanic stuff. As users delve deeper into their memories, they realize that there are no external records of the show's existence, and even those who say they remember seeing it have different recollections of certain episodes. Despite the discrepancies, the eerie and inexplicable nature of the show continues to haunt those who experienced it all the way back then. All the way at our number one spot, we have the Smile Dog. In 2008, a story about a horrifying image known as the Smile Dog circulated online, causing fear and terror among those who saw it. The origin of the story is still a mystery, but many believe it was born on the infamous internet message board 4chan. The image itself is of a husky dog with a creepy, unnatural smile on its face, with a human hand ascending from the darkness on the left side of the frame. According to the legend, anyone who looks at the photograph experiences great anxiety, nausea, and eventually insanity. Once someone gazes upon Smile Dog, they are met with epileptic fits, during which visions of the demonic mutt flash before their eyes. The only way to rid oneself of the curse is to communicate with the beast directly. It's said that the Smile Dog visits the victim's dreams and tasks them with spreading its image to fresh minds. Once it completed its task, the seizures and visions subside, and the victim is finally freed. Number 10, Grim Reaper in Guadalajara. In the heart of Guadalajara, a bustling Mexican city known for its vibrant culture and rich history, a haunting scene unfolds. The sun sets, casting long shadows upon the cobblestone streets as an eerie hush falls over the normally lively neighborhood. Amidst the fading light, a chilling figure emerges, shrouded in darkness and draped in a tattered cloak. It is the Grim Reaper, a personification of death itself, silently making its way down the deserted street. The Reaper's presence sends a collective shiver down the spines of any unfortunate souls who happen to witness this spectacle. The Reaper's face remains hidden beneath the depths of its hood, leaving only a glimpse of its skull-like image, cold and unfeeling. Hollow eye sockets devoid of life stare out into the darkness, seemingly piercing through the souls of any who dare to meet its gaze. Number nine, a spider-like creature. In this haunting digital art piece, a chilling spider-like creature with unmistakable human features is depicted, evoking a deep sense of unease and terror. The creature stands tall and its elongated limbs bearing an unsettling resemblance to spider legs. Its body is an image of spider and human characteristics, instilling an eerie fusion of familiar and alien. The creature's head is a grotesque hybrid, combining Yonacrid's multiple eyes with a humanoid face, conveying an unsettling combination of curiosity and malice. 
Its eyes gleam with an otherworldly glow, reflecting a sinister intelligence that seems to penetrate one's very soul. Number eight, Bush Ogre. The ambience is shrouded in darkness, with the moon barely casting a feeble light through the thick canopy overhead. A bush dominates the foreground. Its branches, gnarled and twisted, appearing worn and aged as if carrying the weight of centuries-old secrets. Suddenly, a burst of blinding flash photography pierces the darkness, momentarily illuminating the gloom. It reveals the figure of an ogre emerging slowly from within the bush. Its hulking silhouette is bathed in a shadowy ambience creating a stark contrast between light and shadow, heightening the sense of horror. Number seven, in the dimly lit room, a chilling atmosphere pervades the air as your eyes fixate on a haunting portrait. Framed in orient gold, it depicts a Victorian doll, but there is something unsettling about its appearance. The doll's cracked porcelain face bears a twisted smirk that seems to etch into your very soul, unnerving your every instinct. The doll's lifeless eyes, once innocent and sparkling, have been replaced by hollow voids that exude an eerie glow. They stare right through you, seemingly piercing the veil between the living and the realm of the supernatural. Shadows dance on the doll's scruffy, matted hair, amplifying its eerie aura. Number six, Skeleton Warrior. In the realm of the fantastical, a breathtaking scene comes to life on a grand canvas. An epic, photorealistic fantasy painting unveils itself, capturing the essence of darkness and mystery in a single frame. At the heart of this masterpiece stands a hooded skeleton warrior, a figure both intimidating and energetic. At the heart of this masterpiece stands a hooded skeleton warrior, a figure both intimidating and mysterious. Cloaked in shadows, the skeleton warrior wears a tattered hood that conceals its bony image, lending an air of mystery to its existence. Ancient and weathered, the warrior's skeletal form is meticulously rendered, its bones depicted with astonishing attention to detail. Number five, demon in your room. As the demon stands in front of a bed, the room becomes a stage for supernatural forces. Wisps of fog slither and dance along the floor, giving an ethereal quality to the scene. The mist curls under the demon's feet, hinting at its ability to manipulate the very essence of its surroundings. To the demon's right, a small window pierces the darkness, serving as the sole source of illumination within the room. A feeble bluish light filters through the glass, casting long distorted shadows on the floor. The light serves as a stark contrast to the darkness, highlighting the sinister presence of the demon and casting an eerie glow on its features. Number four, Grim Reaper on a Skeleton Horse. In the realm of photorealism, a scene of chilling awe unfolds before your eyes. In the depths of a dense and ancient woodland, the figure of the Grim Reaper emerges riding astride a skeleton horse. The attention to detail in this masterful artwork brings the scene to life, blurring the boundaries between reality and the realm of the supernatural. Its silhouette, tattered and majestic, billows in the wind, shrouding the rider in an aura of darkness. The fabric seems to transcend the boundaries of the canvas as if it possesses a life of its own. Number three, Eerie Funeral. The mourners surrounding the fallen exhibit an array of emotions, each person grieving in their own unique way, and their faces etched with pain and loss while others kneel, and their hands bowed in solemn and reflection. The figures are depicted with stark contrasts of light and shadow, underscoring the depth of their grief. The scene is further intensified by the presence of atmospheric elements. Dust and dirt hang suspended in the air, creating a haze that adds to the sense of desolation. 
Rays of light pierce through the gloom, casting long shadows across the ground and the figures, adding a dramatic touch to the composition. Number two, the ocean walker. The canvas is awash in shades of deep inky blue, evoking a sense of foreboding and mystery. The artist's brush strokes bring the waves to life, their tumultuous motion frozen in time. The ocean's surface appears temptatious, with frothy crests and churning currents hinting at hidden pearls beneath. Amidst the rolling waves stands the figure of the ocean walker. Cloaked in darkness, this spectral entity seems to emerge seamlessly with the surrounding waters. The brush strokes capture the nature of the creature with its form blurring between solid and liquid, as if it's both of the ocean and within it. Finally, at number one, an odd creature. In a biology laboratory, a scene of scientific intrigue unfolds as a biological specimen of devious evolutionary origin is encased with a glass jar. The monochromatic image captures the atmosphere of curiosity and speculation that surrounds this creature. Amidst the scientific backdrop, the glass jar stands as a vessel of containment and observation. Its transparent walls reveal the peculiar creature within it captivating the viewer's attention. The specimen of a devious evolutionary origin defies conventional categorization, showcasing a bewildering combination of features and adaptations. At our number 10 spot, we have My Doom. This one is the first one I mentioned because this could very well be the most destructive virus on this list. And there are some pretty bad ones I have yet to mention. My Doom was the fastest spreading email based worm ever, except rather than targeting regular people, this virus attacked tech companies such as Microsoft, Google, and SEO. For those who don't know, a worm is a standalone program that doesn't need a host program to run. There are many worms on the list, so just keep that in mind. The virus was introduced in 2004 and it was activated when people would open the attached file onto the infected email. This would then take over the entire computer by sending more emails to more people. And you can see how devastating this was, especially if you got guys like Bill Gates and Ed Warren in your email list. This worm could target the back door of port 3127 on unpatched versions of Microsoft Windows, which just meant that it had all access to all parts of your system, including all of your information. Since this virus is able to spread through various emails and such, it actually got to a point when so many emails were sent, the internet started to slow down. At the end of the day, MyDoom was responsible for over $38 million in damages, and at its peak, it was responsible for over 25% of the emails at the time. At our number nine spot, we have Melissa. This virus is able to spread through Microsoft's Outlook email program, and it disguised itself as a Microsoft Word document. And its ability was to take advantage of a computer's function known as a macro. For those non-computer geeks, the best way to describe a macro is to think about your mouse. You know those little buttons on the side or even the ones in the middle, if you were to set one of those buttons as a mouse clip, for example, that would be considered a macro. Basically, another input to do another input on your computer. Once users clicked on these infected emails, their computers would get hijacked and be forced to send the same email to 50 other people. This caused crazy online traffic and caused these email companies over $80 million in damages. The person behind this virus was named David L. Smith and he was caught only a week after Melissa was first released back in March 1999. He was sentenced to 20 months in prison with a $5,000 fine, which is really low considering the cost of damages he really did. At number 8 spot, we have Sasser. This malicious virus was first released on April 30th, 2004, and was created by a 17-year-old German computer science student named Sven Jasten. The virus worked by exploiting computers' operating systems through vulnerable network ports. It caused multiple news channels to go completely dark, had planes cancelled all over North America and parts of Europe, and lastly, the British Coast. Coast Guard's electronics got completely shut off at the time. The virus was able to do this by overriding a computer's security system until it crashed. News broke out quickly and as quick as the virus was released, it quickly got shut down. They managed to find out who created the worm right away and Microsoft posted a 250000 bounty to find the student. Then on May 7, 2004, Sven got arrested because one of his own friends informed Microsoft directly that he created the worm. He would be found guilty of computer sabotage and illegally altering data. 
Then a year later, he would be handed a 21 month suspended sentence. At our number 7 spot, we have Crypto Locker. Crypto Locker is a type of ransomware or Trojan horse virus that encrypts the contents of infected computers, which basically prevents all access to any of your information. This means private photos, passwords, banking information, social security information. After becoming infected, victims are expected to pay a ransom in order to decrypt and recover their files. Basically, a blackmail in a virus. This virus would be sent out usually through emails that contain sketchy attachments. The largest spread of the virus was between September 2013 to late May 2014. This virus took over 500,000 machines and demanded a ransom of $300 for each and every single one of those computers. And at the end of the day, it stole over $3 million and for some, they never even decrypted their stolen data. At number 6 spot, we have Code Red. First observed in 2001, this virus was discovered by EI Digital Security employees and named it Code Red because oddly enough, they are drinking Code Red Mountain Dew at the time. In just a single day on July 19, 2011, the virus attacked just under half a million websites. On all infected websites, it had the text string saying, quote, welcome to www.worm.com hacked by Chinese. The virus worked by infecting a single computer then attacking specific sites. After 20 days, the infected computer will launch a quote, denial of service attack, which is when you flood a website with requests for access until that website can't handle the weight of internet traffic. Eventually, the FBI issued a warning to all infected businesses because they may still have a dormant computer ready to send another wave of attacks. Right in the hump of our list, we have Klez. This worm was sent out through spoof emails to ensure no chance of being traced back, and it was also notable for being a virus that didn't even need to be downloaded, only need to be previewed or opened to be infected onto your computer. Once it infected a computer, it would replicate itself and send more emails to other people, causing millions of emails to be sent out like a machine. This high internet traffic caused communications all over the world to shut down, which ended up dealing an estimated $19.8 billion in damages. At number 4 spot, we have Stormworm. In 2007, yet another worm spread through email, but it wasn't holding your information for ransom, it wasn't deleting your files, it just wanted to take over your entire computer. In infected emails, it would have the subject line, 230 dead as storm batters Europe. Then inside the email, it wouldn't have an attachment like others on this list, instead it would have a website link where when you clicked it, the virus would then be downloaded onto your system. So what it do? It was being used as a botnet, and for those who don't know, a botnet is a group of computers that form one single network. Basically, they can be used to work together to make things more efficient, to launch attacks in coordination. The possibilities are endless. With one computer, imagine many, many more. The Stormworm would then go on to slow down and disable web servers and even stole passwords and identity information for hundreds of thousands of people. At its peak, the botnet contained over 1.5 million computers ready to do anything it asks. So just imagine if they want to do something way more evil, because they definitely could with that type of power. At number 3 spot, we have so big. For this, you get the best of both worlds, because this virus contains both a worm and a Trojan horse virus within one email. The infected email would arrive with the subject line, re-wicked screensaver or re-approved. Then below would be yet another attachment. The virus is unique because CNET considered it to be the fastest growing virus ever. It would go on to delay airlines because of communication system failure, and caused many North American companies to have no access to electricity or communication. At number 2 spot we have Surcamp. This worm as many others on this list was released via email with a fishy attachment along with it. The file would say quote, I send you this file in order to have your advice, check it. When users clicked it, they would have their whole system infected immediately. What's different about this worm is that it would randomly select files on your computer and then send them to other people. So imagine you worked for a highly confidential job or even you were just a private person. You can see how this is very detrimental. At our number one spot is the I love you virus. This one is by far the most popular one on this list and is also considered to be one of the most deadliest viruses ever released, which is why it takes our number one spot. The I love you virus or the love bug virus is a computer worm that reached up to 45 million computers in just a matter of two days. It was called this because the infected email that was sent out to people had the subject line, I love you, with an attachment below named love letter for you .txt. This would be ironic since the moment you click the txt file, the virus will do everything to show you that they don't love you. This worm 
platform will go through all of your computer files, including the documents where passwords, private images, or audio files could be stored, and then it would change the file's names to I love you. Basically, it would replicate itself until your computer is filled with files named I love you. Then it would send the I love you email to even more people on this list, then it would infect their computer with I love you files. In the end, it caused a total of 9 billion in damages worldwide, and an extra 10 billion just to remove the worm completely. The virus was then traced back to two developers in the Philippines. They're arrested, but then they're released since no law forbid them from doing that. 